Good morning. Thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, and today we are on Lesson 101. God's will for me is perfect happiness. If you'd like to close your eyes and join me in prayer. Dear Father, if left to my own devices, my perception will be skewed. I surrender to you everything that I think and feel. Please send your spirit to redeem my mind that I might be set free. Help me to be who you would have me be. Do what you would have me do. Go where you would have me go. And say what you would have me say and to whom, dear God. God, please enable me to set aside everything I think I know about everything. About A Course in Miracles, about this day about my job, about the people around me. Please allow me an open mind and a new experience. Give me childlike eyes. Help me to see from love, from truth. Amen. Okay, here we go. Lesson 101. God's will for me is perfect happiness. Today, we will continue the theme of happiness. This is a key idea in understanding what salvation means. You still believe that it asks for suffering as penance for your sins. The sins is in quotations. This is not so. You must, yet, you must think, think it so while you believe that sin is real and that God's Son can sin. I'm going to repeat that since I chopped it up a little bit. Yet you must think it so while you believe that sin is real and that God's son can sin. If sin is real, then punishment is just and cannot be escaped. Salvation thus cannot be purchased but through suffering. If sin is real, then happiness must be an illusion, for they cannot both be true. The sinful warrant only death and pain, and it is this they ask for. For they know it waits for them, and it will seek them out and find them somewhere, sometime, in some form that evens the account they owe to God. They would escape him in their fear, and yet he will pursue, and they cannot escape. If sin is real, salvation must be pain. Pain is the cost of sin, and suffering can never be escaped if sin is real. Salvation must be feared, for it will kill, but slowly taking everything away before it grants the welcome boon of death to victims who are little more then bones before salvation is appeased. Its wrath is boundless, merciless, but wholly just. Who would seek out such savage punishment? Who would not flee salvation and attempt in every way he can to drown the voice which offers it to him? Why would he try to listen and accept its offering? If sin is real, its offering is death and meted out in cruel form to match the vicious wishes in which sin is born. If sin is real, salvation has become your bitter enemy, the curse of God upon you who have crucified his son. You need the practice periods today. The exercises teach sin is not real. And all that you believe must come from sin will never happen, for it has no cause. Accept atonement with an open mind which cherishes no lingering belief that you have made a devil of God's Son. There is no sin. We practice this thought as often as we can today 
because it is the basis for today's idea. God's will for you is perfect happiness because there is no sin and suffering is causeless. Joy is just and pain is but the sign you have misunderstood yourself. Fear not the will of God, but turn to it in confidence that it will set you free from all the consequences sin has wrought in feverish imagination. Say, God's will for me is perfect happiness. There is no sin. It has no consequence. So should you start your practice periods and then attempt again to find the joy these thoughts will introduce into your mind. Give these five minutes gladly to remove the heavy load you lay upon yourself with the insane belief that sin is real. Today, escape from madness. You are set on freedom's road. And now, today's idea brings wings to speed you on and hope to go still faster to the waiting goal of peace. There is no sin. Remember this today and tell yourself as often as you can, God's will for me is perfect happiness. This is the truth because there is no sin. Whew. So let's go ahead and get ready to go into the meditation. You can go ahead and close your eyes. Let's start with a 2x breath. Inhale twice through the nose and four times out through the mouth. Do that a few times and then 3x. Three seconds through the nose and six seconds out the mouth. And then we'll do the 4x, which is four and eight. Now let's go ahead and come to our senses. Feel what you feel, the clothing against your skin, the temperature in the room. Hear what you hear. My clock, maybe. I love my clock. Taste what you taste. See what you see with your eyes closed through your eyelids, the different light patterns. And then on a big inhale, smell what you smell. Now let's go ahead and do all of these senses together. Feel what you feel, taste what you taste, hear what you hear, 
See what you see and smell what you smell. God's will for me is perfect happiness. There is no sin. It has no consequence. This is the truth because there is no sin. God's will for me is perfect happiness.
God's will for me is perfect happiness. And now let's shift into gratitude. That's a lot to celebrate right there. Go ahead and ask yourself, what am I grateful for today? Remind yourself that God's will for you is happiness. Today is a day of celebration and happiness. This is the truth because there is no sin. There is no sin. It has no consequence. God's will for me is perfect happiness. I love you. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for joining with me.